everyone. Welcome to Q&A, where we're going to be answering some tough questions about faith, the Bible, and just life in general. So if you have a question that you would like answered, go ahead and drop that in the comments below, along with any prayer requests you might have, or just say hi and let us know that you're here. So without further ado, here is today's question. Hey, Pastor Jay, so this is a question that we've gotten uh, quite a few times. This person is wanting to know uh, how to get started with prayer. They've been wanting to do it for a while, but haven't really found a way to do it. What would you suggest for someone who's wanting to get started in their prayer life? All right, that's a really good question. And um, I would love for you guys to have more questions. So if you guys have comments or questions, put them in comments or, you know, you can message our Facebook page. Just let us know what they are. And we'll try to do as many as we can and see, see where it goes. But this question's a, a good one is, you know, how do I get started praying? I mean, I know some of you guys are probably experts in praying and been doing this for a while. And then some, maybe we're not as faithful in it as we, we probably should be. And some, I know, struggle, uh, get started. Just getting started, they struggle as far as like, well, how do I do it practically? How do I get started? So I wanted to present some practical tips. There's a lot of different things that we can do in prayer. Um, we could do a whole series just on this. Um, but I want to highlight a couple practical tips to help get you started in knowing how to pray. And, um, you know, there's a lot of books on this. There's one book that I think will expound on this a little bit more. It's called Penetrating the Darkness by Jack Hayford. There's a variety of other books on prayer by Richard Foster or prayer by Timothy Keller. Um, there's even prayer, uh, a book by, um, you know, Spiritual Warfare, I think, um, Dress to Kill by Rick Winter by Rick Renner. These are all um, really good books that will touch on prayer. Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. There's a lot of different resources out there. Um, but here are some practical tips. So when you're getting started to pray, one of the first things that you can do is that you present yourself. You just come before the Lord and present yourself. And um, one of the ways that I do that is simply by trying to get my heart right. I will almost always start by praying a verse. And so sometimes there's like a, a verse of that season that I'm really praying over because I really need that truth to get into my life. Um, sometimes I'll pray Matthew 6, which is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If I think that I'm getting distracted or focusing on the wrong things, I'll pray that prayer. Or sometimes I'll pray John 15, 5. It says, you know, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and me and them will bear much fruit. If I'm really needing to remind myself I need to reconnect with God or or if I uh, read um, Psalms where it talks about um, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but I trust in the name of the Lord our God. You know, if I, if I start to worry about fear of any kind. So there's a lot of different things I'll pray to get my heart right, to get it postured in the right direction. I mean, sometimes even um, Exodus 14:14, 14, 14, which I'll pray is, the Lord will fight for you. All you have to do is remain still. Sometimes I'll pray that prayer when I know that I'm getting anxious and I don't really know what to do, but I'm, I know myself I'm, willing, I'm about to take a step just because I want to do something. So uh, this is where being in the Word really, really matters is because there's a whole slew of verses in my heart that depending on where I'm at, I can pull out and I start by presenting myself. Lord, I give you all the glory and honor. My trust isn't in chariots. My, my trust isn't in horses. It's in you. And I just come before you, and I begin to I start off with the verse, and I'll begin to just speak, Lord, thank you. I'm presenting myself before you. You are my God. You are my Savior. And I begin to just focus on how amazing God is, because what happens is, as I, as I present myself and I focus on God, my heart will move from being self-focused to being God-focused. Being God, you are strong. You are beautiful. You are truthful. You are holy. You are faithful. You are creative. And what it does is, by little by little, I stop focusing on myself because sometimes that's the reason why we struggled in prayer because we're so focused on ourselves that we can't focus on God. And so that's just a very simple step. Start off with a verse. Is there a verse that's coming out to you? And if not, maybe open up the Bible and, and find one that really speaks to you and start praying that verse out and then begin to pray out how amazing God is so we can shift from self-focus to God-focus. So first we present ourselves, then we present our hearts. Uh, one of the best examples in Scripture I can think of off the top of my head is Psalm 139. And essentially, he's saying, oh, search my heart, O Lord. And this is how we get into prayer. We present ourselves, 
then we present our heart. We actually give God permission to investigate, to, to look into our heart and our mind. Is there anything in me that's not of you? Is there anything in me that's dishonoring, that's being deceived? Is there anything in me that's being self-focused or um, where I'm not really honoring you? Part of praying, sometimes the reason why we have a barrier in prayer is because we're so wrapped up in self. So we give God permission to investigate and to uh, look into our heart and our minds. And even sometimes the Lord will, um, will bring to our knowledge at that time some things that are there. Don't ignore it. Pray about it. Repent of it. If you have an issue with a friend, the Bible says, go to that person first, be reconciled, then come back to God. So perhaps, maybe sometimes the barrier in prayer is because you have an offense with someone else. If you're easily offended, you have all these grudges and you, won't, you don't like to forgive someone, it will continue to hinder your prayer life because we are called to be reconciled. And that means we need to be intentional about it. If we sit there and go, well, they haven't apologized to me, sometimes we have to go to them. The same thing with our spouse. You know, our, if you have an issue with your spouse, it will become a hindrance to your prayer life. So we start by presenting ourselves. We present our heart by asking God to investigate us and to bring remembrance. And if it's something that comes up, we repent. Lord, please forgive me of my pride or my lust or my greed or my arrogance or whatever it might be. So we present our hearts. Another thing to get started in prayer is to present your day. Um, one verse is Proverbs uh, 3, 6 through 7 says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. Present your day. So when you come before, if you make a regular habit of doing this, your prayer life will grow exponentially. But part of it is presenting your day. Lord, I give you my day. Lord, direct me in all the things that I'm doing. Help me to make wise decision. It breaks my heart. So many Christians make major life decisions, and they never really ask the Lord about it. They make decisions on jobs. They make decisions on moving. They make uh, decisions on relationships or school or even majors. And we make these decisions just because we're like, oh, well, this makes sense. No, we need to present our day. Whatever is going to be presented to us, Lord, please direct me because I could be blind, but Lord, you can direct my paths. I want to make you known in every situation. So one of the ways you get started is just by praying for your day. Pray for your job. Pray for your schooling. Pray for your trip there and back. Pray for um, your family during the day. Present him, Lord, this day is yours. Help me to honor you today. Help me to have a presence. Help me have, have your presence in my life for the rest of this day in every meeting that I have, every phone call, every assignment, every task. Lord, I give you my day. I present my day. And lastly, present your reach. You know, Job tells us that what he would end up doing is he would pray on a daily basis. He would pray for his family and the things that he had. And by all accounts, Job was pretty well off. Um, and so we should pray for our reach. Everything that we have influence, and any area of influence, whether it be on social media, whether it be in our jobs, our school, our families, our neighborhoods, whatever influence that we have, we should present our reach to God and say, Lord, I give you my reach. I present to you my reach because whatever influence I have is a gift from you. So please use me. Use my money. Use my talents. Use my time, my relationships, Please use these things. I give them to you. Please show me how to steward them. Help me to live them out. How do I honor you in these particular areas? So, so the question is, is how can you present your reach in your job if you manage people? How can that look like in your job? Or how might that look in your family or in your neighborhood? It's really important because in our culture, we're kind of raised to think that our influence is kind of our thing. That whatever we have, we have because, you know, we earned it, or it's ours. It, we're kind of independent in doing that, but we're called to be stewards of what we have, and so we have to give back to God what is originally His to begin with. Lord, I give you my reach. See, sometimes our prayers are hindered because we're already not obeying God. You know, we often want Him to act on our behalf, or we want Him to speak to us, but we haven't already acted on the things that we know to do. So, if you want to hear the Lord speak to you, if you want direction into your life, one of the things that God wants you to do is to obey the things you already know to do. And we do that by presenting our reach. So we present ourselves, 
We present our hearts. We present our day. We present our reach. If you ask God to use your giftings, your talents, your influence, be ready to act because he will. He'll give you opportunities even today where you can use your reach. He can use uh, your influence. And I believe he wants to do that. He's already given it to us. Let's give it back to him. And as we do these things, it will help cultivate an attitude of prayer. Like I said, there's a lot of things we could cover in prayer, but I think these four practical steps can help some, because I think they often address some of the barriers that we might have that prevent us from praying more. We just kind of get stopped. I want to ask you to encourage you to do this. For the next week, do these four presents where you present. Try it every day, even if it's only for 15 minutes in a day. Put it on your calendar, put it on your phone as a reminder. You know, if you want to go over and above, try it in the morning and at night. But I would encourage you to do it at least in the mornings because you're praying for your day. I encourage you to do it, try to do it in the mornings, whether it's during your commute, whether when you, um, when you first wake up or right after breakfast or whenever you can do it. I'm going to ask you to try to do it for seven days in a row. Even ask a friend to keep you held accountable and ask you if you did it or not. Put it on your calendar for seven days. Try to accomplish it in a row. And I'm willing to, well, I was going to say I'm willing to bet, but I don't know that that's really a pastor thing to do. But I believe that you will see a difference. If you take this next seven days and you do this, I think you'll begin to see a difference. And if you do, please let us know. Um, put a comment down, message us, and let us know what God's done in your heart, what opportunities he brought, what transformation or breakthroughs. Please let us know about them. We'd love to see them. Well, let me pray for you real quick. Lord, in Jesus' name, I just pray a blessing over you. I pray for everyone who's watching this, whether they're watching it live or they're watching it after it's recorded, I just pray, God, right now that you'd help us to really be people of prayer. Help us to fight through for those people who struggle to pray. It's something that's difficult or, you know, something where they, they easily get distracted. I pray, God, that you'd give them the endurance, the courage to act on this, and that you would meet them as they pray this out, God, that you would just minister to them, that you would direct them, and that they would see breakthrough and transformation in their life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Praying for you. Again, let us know about your prayer request. Prayer matters. Your prayer matters. Keep praying. Blessings. Again, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this or learned something new, go ahead and drop a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, we're going to do more Q&As and devotionals in the future, go ahead and hit subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Again, if you have a question that you would like answered, go ahead and drop that in the comments below, and you just might see it on another one of these Q&A videos. So until then, blessings.